Hey guys, Jim Nix with Nomadic Pursuits and I've got another video for you today. This one's about noise reduction and a couple of different tricks and tips that I've been using to uh, more selectively and better control noise reduction in my photos. So I'm going to run you through an example. This is a photo I took in Amsterdam at sunset and this is a three exposure HDR. It's actually already been processed and completed. I'm just going to use it as an example photo to illustrate my, uh, my two tips and tricks for you. So, um, because it's a complete, it f uh, completed photo, I don't really need to do noise reduction. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of jack up the clarity and the HDR look, make it a little ugly like that, just to create some noise and distraction in the sky and water. Because what I n normally like to do is create pretty smooth skies and waters and uh, really hopefully no evidence of noise in them. So let me show you where we started was like that. Uh, and here we are. And again, this is just my base layer. I'm just messing with the structure a little bit to create some noise where it otherwise didn't exist. Uh, I guess I'm too lazy to get in my library and find a real photo with noise. So I'm just going to make noise. Okay. So how do you get rid of the noise? Well, there's, uh, you know, a lot of talk in the community about denoise and it's, uh, absolutely uh, a great tool. In fact, it's one of my favorite things that's built into Aurora is the ability to, to use the denoise slider. And so what I normally do is I create a new layer. I normally name it after whatever I'm doing in that layer. In this case, denoise or DN because I'm too lazy to type it all. And then you just come down here and you move the sliders, right? And so if you look at the sky, specifically the sky, the water a little bit because um, it, there was no long exposure work here. I wanted to capture the boat. Uh, and so that means the water is still a little bit choppy, even though it's a three exposure HDR. So the water is not really going to get really smooth. I'm okay with that. Uh, but I've gone in here and created a much smoother sky. So let me show you that. There's the, uh, the noisy version, and then here's the clean, uh, cleaner sky. But, you know, as you, as you probably know, if you've been using Aurora, is as you move these sliders over here, they're global adjustments. And so that means it affects everything, including these buildings. And so what I normally do is I come in and I'll, uh, I'll just mask it in wherever I want the adjustment to take place. In this case, the sky and water. So I'm going to come in and just paint that adjustment into the sky. Uh, and I'm doing this pretty roughly. So because it's a video and I don't want to bore you with watching me try to be a, uh, you know, do a fine mask, I'm just kind of roughly doing this. I would take my time if I was doing this on a, on a real finished image. But let me let me wipe all that in on the water as well. Let me just check so at least I get it kind of close. I'll just go over that boat. I'm too lazy to go around it in this video. So you have a mass that looks something like that. And so let me show you the before and after. There's the before. Look how messy the sky is. And then there's the after. Much smoother, a little bit dreamy sky, which I tend to like. And I preserved all the, uh, the detail in the buildings. Uh, but here's uh, tip number one, and that is... Sometimes you want different amounts of noise reduction in different places. And so sometimes I'll go in and I'll create a second layer of noise reduction. And I'll come in here and maybe I want to take a little bit of noise out of the buildings. You know, maybe it's a little too detailed, a little too sort of over the, uh, you know, unrealistic, I guess is the word. So instead of on the previous layer where I did all those uh, pretty far uh, to the right sort of sliding, uh, I'll do something a little bit more subtle here. But because I want it to go into the buildings as opposed to the sky and water, I need to get a mask going. And the easy thing to do is just take this mask and copy it. So you click on that previous layer. Remember, here's the mask. There's that mask. I just want the opposite of that mask. So I'll take this mask and I'll say copy mask. And then I'll come up here and say uh, paste mask. But I want to invert it because I want the opposite, right? So invert mask. There you go. If I left it the same, I'd basically be... Uh, masking on top of my previous mask on this layer and that would just be sort of like doubling down on the noise reduction in the sky and water which I don't want I just want to adjust the noise in the uh, in the building uh, there you go so uh, it's gonna be very subtle but there's the before there's the after let me let me zoom in a little bit in this building you could probably tell quite a bit better so here it is uh, give it a second there you go so there's the photo here's the before and there's the after. If you look at the building, you can see that some of the uh, uh, noise has been removed. And again, this is a finished image, so I'm not really going to worry about it being a uh, uh, completely accurate rendition. I just wanted to show you what I would do and how you can use multiple layers of noise reduction 
to adjust the uh, the final look of your photo. So that's tip number one. Use you know denoise on a couple of different layers and apply it selectively, uh, or more specifically, uh, apply it in different amounts on the different layers. However, there's another trick I've been experimenting with, and uh, this one's a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun. And so I'm back to the original base image where I have this structure that is sort of jacked up a little bit to give me this crazy detail in the sky and stuff that I don't want. And so this tip is, I'm going to go create a new layer, and I'm going to apply denoise, right? And so let's just move that back up quite a bit. And there we go. Uh, and I don't remember the numbers from the previous example, but it was pretty, uh, pretty far like that. So that's pretty cool. Again, it affects everything because it's a global adjustment. But instead of doing uh, masking um, with a brush or uh, doing you know multiple layers, I'm going to create a luminosity mask. And so if you aren't familiar with luminosity masks, you might want to check out one of my previous videos where I talk about it in detail. But basically, the gist of a lumina, uh, luminosity mask is that it creates masks based on light values. And so the brighter the part of the brightest parts of the image get a heavier mask, which means it gets more of the adjustment, and the darker parts of the image get a lighter mask, which means it gets less of the adjustment. And so if you look here, uh, let me show you what the mask is. There you go. So there's a luminosity mask. The brighter parts of the image, which is a lot of the water and a lot of the sky, they get a heavier mask, which means they get more of this denoise adjustment. And a little bit darker parts of the image, which would be the buildings and the trees and, and that sort of thing, they'll get a lighter mask, which means they'll get less of this adjustment. And so let me show you the before. There it is, uh, kind of messy. And then the after. It's a very subtle application. And again, um, you know what you could do is, and I often find myself doing this, is maybe moving these sliders around a little bit after I've applied the luminosity mask, because it's uh, you know it's not until the uh, luminosity mask is applied that you're really sure what it's going to look like, right? So let me show you one more time. There's the before, really messy sky, which was done on purpose, of course, and then here it is with the luminosity mask. It's a much more subtle application and and one that I like. It still leaves me a little bit of detail in the clouds, which is kind of fun instead of the dreamier look that I had earlier. And uh, I think it looks quite nice. And also, it applies a subtle uh, touch of uh, noise reduction to these darker areas, like the buildings and, and that sort of thing. And the other thing you could do, if it warranted it, would be to invert this mask. And there you go. That would apply noise reduction more heavily to the shadows and less heavily to the, um, uh, to the brighter areas. I actually like it uh, with the typical mask, so I'm going to invert it back, which would get me the... Uh, this mask, which is our standard. But that's it, really. So that's a tip for you. And again, you could do this on multiple layers. You could say, I really like that. And then you could go add another layer of noise reduction, add a luminosity mask, and do it again just to get a, a fine-tuned adjustment uh, for the noise. So that's really it. Two tips. The first one being add multiple layers of uh, different amounts of noise reduction to get the look you want. And the second one is apply noise reduction on a luminosity mask, which gives you a bit finer uh, and more subtle application of the noise reduction in your photo. Okay, that's all I got. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you next time.